Good evening, everyone. Please let me know if you can hear me um, in the chat. I am She Loves Thee. And today we have a show. I'm trying to keep it under an hour. Um, I'm here in Missouri for my son, um, my great grandmother, which is my son's great great grandmother. Her 97th birthday is this coming Friday. And um, thank you, Miss Tyra Lynn. And hey, Jay. Hey, Big B. Um, thank you all for tuning in. I promise you, I'm going to try to keep this live brief. Usually whenever we have lives, it ends up being like two hours long. So I'm going to try as best as I can um, to keep it under that mark. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, or if you've been here before, you already know, I'm going to ask you to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, today, we have a very important live um, to discuss, and that is we have the Mississippi primaries, and they are tomorrow. And so I thought I wanted to do this earlier um, last week, but I just was so overwhelmed with a lot of different things. And then I got here and I was like, look, I have to go live. I know my grandma's getting ready to turn 97 and I'm all the way in Missouri. Thank goodness my next door neighbor has, uh, my grandmother's next door neighbor has Wi-Fi. So they let me get the Wi-Fi. And so we are good to go. Um, we're just going to discuss some of the uh, key candidates on the ballots. We're going to talk a little bit about a very important um, decision that was made by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals that directly has to do with um, voting and how that will affect voting in Mississippi or will um, the other party try to basically appeal this decision all the way to the Mississippi Supreme Court. So that particular um, lifetime ban on voting for certain felonies, it's not necessarily a done deal, but it is a step in the, in the right direction. Um, they said that it could possibly affect over 200,000 voters in the state of Mississippi with regards to being able to vote. Um, so I think that it's important that we do talk about that. Um, I um, got some recommendations from some people directly from the state of Mississippi, specifically Hines County. Um, and they gave me a couple recommendations of some of the races that we should be focused on. Um, if you know or have somebody that you would like to talk about um, that you know is running for uh, re-election or maybe they are running um, in a runoff and you know their name, we can look them up during the show and we can talk about them. Um, so I'm going to stay on four candidates that I wanted to bring out and talk about, but if there are some candidates that you know of um, during the Mississippi primary that you would like to speak about or talk about, there's nothing wrong with um, highlighting it in the comments. And then, or you can, when I drop the stream yard in about, I want to say 35 minutes, I'll drop the stream yard. And then anybody that wants to comment on or um, tell me a little bit about any of the other different offices that are up for grabs, feel free to do so. And I'm getting ready to play one more Jackson State song and then I will be 100% ready. <laughs>
Oh, my internet kind of janky, y'all. I'm not at home. That's not my fault. <laughs> okay. Um, so as I stated before, um, the United States uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has struck down Mississippi's lifetime ban on voting for people um, convicted of certain felonies. Um, and this is a three judge panel. And basically they said that it's unconstitutional because it inflicts cruel and unusual punishment. In a 2-1 ruling released Friday, the panel sent the case back to U.S. District Judge Daniel Jordan III in the Southern District of Mississippi with the instructions to find the state's lifetime ban on voting to be unconstitutional. The majority said, by severing former offenders from the body of politics forever, Section 241, the lifetime ban provision of the state constitution, ensures that they will never be fully rehabilitated, continues to punish them beyond the terms their culpability requires, and serves no protective function to society. It is thus a cruel and unusual punishment. The Court of Appeals decision comes on the heels of the United States Supreme Court refusing in June to hear another case seeking to find Mississippi's lifetime felony voting ban unconstitutional. That case sought to find to have the felony voting ban declared unconstitutional because it was originally adopted as part of the 1890 Constitution in an attempt to prevent Black Mississippians from voting. The lawsuit that was addressed by the three judge panel was filed by the Southern Poverty Law Center, Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, LLP, and others on behalf of Mississippians who have lost their voting rights. The Office of Attorney General Lynch Fitch opposed the lawsuit on behalf of the state. It is possible that the state may appeal the decision of the three judge panel to the entire Fifth Circuit. Um... And I'm just going to read a little bit more about it. We're overjoyed with the ruling, obviously, and with the prospects of tens of thousands of Mississippians regaining their right to vote, said Brad Hurd, head of voting rights with the Southern Poverty Law Center. We absolutely agree with the court that permanent disenfranchisement is cruel and unusual punishment under the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The Opinion overturning the lifetime voting ban was written by Circuit Judge James Dennis and joined by Carolyn Deneen King, both of whom have senior status on the Fifth Circuit, Judge Edith Jones dissented. She argued that the U.S. Supreme Court in a 1974 decision already had ruled that such lifetime bans were allowed. The 1974 ruling said a lifetime ban did not violate equal protection clause of the United States Constitu excuse me, Constitution, or in other words, was not unconstitutional because it allowed a certain group of people to be treated differently. But the Supreme Court did not rule on whether it was cruel and unusual punishment. So it's good to see that we um, have a ruling uh, for this particular um, lifetime ban, uh, because as you know, it was created to disproportionately affect black voters. Um, my, this is going to be one of the four candidates that we talk about today. Um, it's important to, of course, um, highlight some of the candidates that are running for particular offices. Um, and I think the reason why it's so important is because um, this DeKeither Stamps, he actually ran for uh, the same office that he's running for again. In 2019, he ran. And that race was so close. I'm getting ready to show you um, about the general election so that you can see how close it was and why it's so important um, for us to vote, especially in these types of elections um, because they have implications um, for 
your district. So Brent Bailey is the incumbent right now. And in the general election for Mississippi Public Service Commission of Central District in um, 2019, he won uh by less than one percent that's crazy let me see 49.7 he won by uh 0.6 of a percent so it looks like less than two thousand votes was the determining factor on that particular election 2022 votes was the determining factor on um, whether or not um, DeKeither was going to win that particular seat. Um, and so the Mississippi Public Service Commission is a three member executive board in the Mississippi state government. The commission regulates telecommunications, electric, gas, water and sewer utilities in the state of Mississippi. Um, the commission was established in 1884. Definitely a big office to hold, especially with um, the water problems that are happening in Jackson, Mississippi, um, even the electricity, the water bills that they had and also um, with telecommunications, Biden just recently um, initiated creating internet availability for rural areas. And so some of these different um, initiatives that Biden passed with telecommunications, that's gonna be important um, for the residents of Mississippi. Um, and so he is running for, let me go ahead and move that out the way. He's running for the Public Security Commission in the Central District. And he is currently um, a member of the Mississippi House of Representatives. Um, and he represents District 66. And so um, I'm just gonna read a little bit about Mr. Stamps. He was born and learned Mississippi graduated from uh, Crystal Springs High School. He served in the US Marine Corps and his career experience includes founding the Keither Stamps Enterprises. He served on the board of directors of the Central Mississippi Planning and Development District. And he's also been affiliated with the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Um, and so his particular position as a House of Representative is getting ready to end. And so that is why um, he is running for the um, Public Security Commission seat. We also have uh, Mr. Willie Simmons. He is um, running for a Public Transportation Commission uh, member, an executive board member. Um, and that's also in the central district. He is the incumbent. Um, and so the Mississippi Transportation Commission, they're responsible for oversight of the state's transportation resources and operations. And once again, it is important to um, continue to have um, members of our community representing us at those levels and in these types of boardrooms and in these types of positions. Um, a little bit about um, Willie Simmons. He earned his bachelor's from Alcorn State University um, and his master's is from Delta State University. Um, he attended Utica Junior College. So basically Mississippi born and bred and he is an HBCU alum. So what more can you ask for? A, a HBCU alum um, and he's went to school down in the Delta. So he's very familiar with the issues um, of the community and he is the incumbent. 
and he will be um, once again, he's running for his reelection bid on that particular committee. Let me go through the next one. The next candidate that I have is Hillman Frazier. Um, he is running for re-election to the Mississippi State Senate to represent District 27. Um, a little bit about Hillman Frazier. He's from Jackson State, let me say. Yes. Um, so Mr. Frazier earned his bachelor's from Jackson State University in 1971 and his Juris Doctorate from George Washington University National Law Center in 1974. So he is an alum of the Jackson State University. Um, I'm going to read out a little bit about the different committees that he was on. He's on the Senate Rules Committee, Public Health and Welfare Committee, Labor Committee, Senate Investigate State Offices Committee, um, Senate Appropriations Committee. So once again, it's just really important for us to continue um, to have various members that are a part of the HBCU community in these types of spaces and advocating for our HBCUs because they went to an HBCU, um, matriculated through there, and they have um, our best interest at hand. So once again, that's Mr. Frazier, and he is an alum of Jackson State University. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that, y'all. Okay, and so lastly, we have Eddie J. Fair, and he is and the he's a Hines County tax collector. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Mr. Fair. Um, I'm going to pull up his stuff because the particular website that I got all of that information from, it did not have anything on um, the Hines County tax collector. Okay, so this is a little bit about Mr. Fair. Um, he has 20 dedicated years of services as the Hines County tax collector, eliminated long lines, organized a special area for senior citizens, invested in continued employee educational training, uh, maintain office integrity while producing 20 years of clean audits. Implemented curbside service and uh, payment kiosks are going to be coming soon throughout the county. Sorry, y'all. I'm at my grandma's house. <laughs> um... And he is running for re-election. I'm going to drop the stream yard on here. Um, so Ed, uh, Mr. Fair is a product of Ruleville, Mississippi. Um, he attended and graduated Ruleville Central High. And he went on to be a, crowd, a proud graduate of none, under, none other than the Jackson State University. He obtained a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice and a master's degree in public policy and administration. Um, he then went and he worked in the Office of Student Affairs at Jackson State. And in 2003, Mr. Fair was the first elected African-American tax collector in Hines County, which is the largest county in the state of Mississippi. So 
We have another Jackson State alum. Um, in the trenches of, of course, politics, advocating for um, Hines County. And so he is up for election. Lastly, I'm going to just pull up quickly the ballot um, for the state of Mississippi. And I think it's important that everybody knows that the primaries is like the precursor to the actual election. So a lot of times people overlook the ballot because they don't think that it's the real place to start. But in all actuality, it's very important that you know who is running for a re-election. And this is the starting point. If a person doesn't get enough votes um, in the primary election, they won't be able to get on the ballot for the general election. So they have to get past that first spot. And in the state of Mississippi, we did see that there was a decrease in the amount of voting of black voters. Um, could that be due to disenfranchisement? Yes. Could that also be that some of these um, counties, Mississippi has tried to dilute them over time by purposely um, creating redistricting to basically dilute the black vote? Absolutely. With the Supreme Court decision, hopefully we'll see a change um, as far as the amount of voters that are disenfranchised by that redistricting. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more about um, the different races that we have and why they're so important once more. And then I'm going to open up the stream yard for people to come and speak a little bit about the Mississippi voting and how important it is. Um, I can't say it enough that the primaries is the precursor to the general election. But if you guys don't um, vote in the primary, then you kind of set yourself up if you don't like who the candidates are. You have to vote in each and every um, step of the way. You can't just pick and choose which one you want to vote for. So I'm going to pull up the whole thing so that we can look at it. And a lot of these um, people that are actually on the ballot, they don't necessarily... Um, let me see. I'll share this. Because we some of these people that are running... I don't know if you guys knew the um, attorney general of Mississippi that's up for grabs. Um, Lynn Fitch has done a lot of questionable things, um, supported a lot of questionable actions. Um, I remember she was trying to get a, trying to influence or overturn a jury's decision to convict somebody of killing someone. A per the person that was killed, of course, was um, somebody black. And she was trying to get that overturned. So she's done a lot of que questionable things, but she is actually going to be running against Greta Martin. Um, as we know, the governor of Mississippi is Tate Reeves. Um, there's only one Democrat that's on the ballot, which is Brandon Presley. There are two um, other Republican candidates that are running. I would have, I would have voted. Um, wondering if the Republicans are so sick of Tate Reeves that they'll at least vote for a different um, Republican Party nominee. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, the Lieutenant Governor of Mississippi is up for grabs. Um, and of course the incumbent is Mr. Hoseman. And we have 
Ryan Grover, Tiffany Longino, and Chris McDaniel. A lot more Republican Party candidates than Democrat, of course. Um, we also have the Mississippi Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce. And um, we have Andy Gibson is the incumbent, but there's Robert Bradford, Bethany Hill, and Terry Rogers II are all um, Democratic nom nominees. Uh, Mississippi Commissioner of Insurance. Um, you have the incumbent Cheney and then Burton and Young that are running. The Mississippi Secretary of State. You have Shawashki Young, who is running uh, for the Secretary of State position. And then you have the incumbent Watson. Mississippi State Auditor. We have Shad White. Um, I'm guessing this is why he's been noticeably more um, vocal about DEI, or you'll just see him doing buzzworthy things after he exposed um, the welfare fraud scandal. He kind of did a flip on it. I don't know if it wasn't taken very well or he's trying to gain, but bonus points, but after he um, exposed the welfare fraud, um, we didn't hear too much. He started like flipping the script and um, using coded language um, basically against Democrat populations. Um, so he, I didn't realize he was running for reelection, but that makes sense now as to why he changed his rhetoric um, the treasurer, we have uh, Miss Addie Lee Green is representing the Democratic Party. And Dave McRae is the incumbent. I will say this, um, in elections, there's been studies that shows that repeat players often have a greater chance of getting reelected because of name recognition. Um, so that's why it's important to know um, who it is that's running so that you don't just choose somebody because you remember the person's name. And of course, um, I we went over the Mississippi Public Service Commission in the Central District, District excuse me. We talked a little bit about that, um, and that is to keep their stamps. And we talked about also the Mississippi Transportation Commission in the Central District. We talked about uh, Mr. Willie Simmons, who's the incumbent. And the Mississippi State Senate District, Solly B. Norwood, it doesn't look like he has anybody that is running against him at this time. So he should be going basically uncontested. Um, we have Sakaya Summers, who's the incumbent of District 68. And that's pretty much it. Um, let me see. I'm going to see if we're going to have a special guest or not. I'm still on. Uh, North Carolina time. So if you are voting tomorrow, can you put a blue and white heart in the chat if you plan on voting tomorrow? Y'all quiet tonight, probably because this is a serious live. Uh 
Uh-oh. Miss Brandy in the chat. She's planning on voting. Okay, Miss Brandy. Um, before I get off, I'm just going to go over what the polls are. So basically, what time they open, what time they close, and if we're going to be able to get rid of... Um, Okay, B Rob, Tony Cook's getting ready to vote. All right, y'all. We need to get these votes out. Um, so it the polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It would be great if the Republicans now, mind you, technically Mississippi is open primary. Yes, yes, Miss Brandy. I was just getting ready to say that. Technically, it's open primary, so you do not do not have to vote in your identified party. So there are a lot of Republicans that are, there's, that are contesting Governor Tate Reeves' bid. So technically, um, Military vet David Hardegree and physician and anti-vaccination activist John Witcher. So there's a chance that people like the Republicans could possibly not vote for Reeves. The only thing that Reeves has going right now is name recognition. Because when I tell you, regardless of if you're a Republican or a Democrat, all the hospitals are closing and there's just been a lot of bad stuff happening in the state of Mississippi. And Governor Tate Reeves has not been a, doing a good job of taking care of it. Um, so there is a possibility that tomorrow, mil military veteran David Hardegree and then the anti-vaccination activist John Witcher, one of them could possibly um, take the bid if he doesn't get nominated tomorrow we don't even have to worry about governor tate reeves um so then the winner will face because of course there is no other democratic um nominee on the ballot um it'll be democrat brandon presley he's a state utility regulator and cousin of rock and roll legend elvis presley he's unopposed and then we have Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman. It says that this particular race has turned increasingly nasty. His opponent is State Senate Chris McDaniel. So the fact that uh, Mr. McDaniel was a senator, that could work in his favor. Once again, a lot of times uh, wins and losses have a lot to do with name recognition. Miss <laughs> um, McDaniel's a four term state legislator who is no stranger to challenging incumbents from his own party. Um, voters will also select nominees for 60 contested state legislature race races and two regional seats for the state utility regulator. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, it says the Associated Press will declare winners in 66 primary elections in Mississippi. This includes four state right races for governor, lieutenant governor, agriculture commissioner, and insurance commissioner, 16 primaries for state senate, and 44 for the state house of representatives. That's a lot of people that are going up for grabs. a lot that are going up for grabs. So there's a possibility that some of these folks could lose um, their seats, especially in rural areas where it's been hard. We saw the welfare scandal that was highly publicized. That could have an effect on um, a lot of people that are, run that are running in those particular um, districts. But it does say winners must receive more than 
of the total vote to avoid an August 29 runoff. 15 races, including statewide races for governor, lieutenant governor, and agriculture commissioner have three or more con candidates and are potentially subject to a runoff. So that's going to be hard um, when you have a runoff election. It's hard to get people to come out for primary elections as it is, but then to say, okay, you guys went out, you did your job on August 8th. We need you to come back out again on August 29th. Um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with the election that took place um, with Raphael War with uh, Warnoff and Raphael Warnoff. Yeah. Um, so basically, he had to do a runoff election. By then, the Republicans had already lost the Senate, so they didn't really push for it that much. But that was a really big um, election for, I guess they were playing, using Herschel Walker as their, basically, the guy that they were going to use to try to make sure that uh, Warnock didn't get elected. And that race was really, really close. I don't know if you guys have ever heard uh, Herschel Walker talk, but it's like, like somebody scratching nails on a chalkboard. So, and he, that, it was way too close for um, the level of talent and intelligence that he displayed. So once again, if there is, if a winner doesn't receive 50% of the total vote, that means on August 29th, there could be another um, runoff race, which means that once again, the total amount of people that show out to that particular election might be low too. Um, and as Ms. Brandy pointed out, Mississippi has an open primary system, which means voters may participate in any party's primary and their choice is recorded. In the event of a runoff, voters may only vote, voters may vote only with the same party as they did in the primary. So that means like if, Let's say uh, Tate Reeves gets into a runoff election and they have to vote on August 29th. If they voted against um, Tate Reeves, they have to vote for the same person. It says the AP does not make predictions and will declare a winner only when it's determined there is no scenario that would allow the trailing candidates to close the gap. Um, that's why a lot of times when you see votes coming in from certain um, counties, they'll, without even all the votes coming in, they'll go ahead and declare a winner, especially in cities that are either hev heavily Democratic or heavily Republican. Um, and then it says the biggest potential delay in reporting final winners on Tuesday may be determined whether a candidate has cleared the threshold needed to avoid a runoff. Races in which the leading candidate hovers near the 50% mark may not need to be called until additional votes are counted, even if the front runner leaves the rest of the field by a significant margin. And I don't know if you guys saw that this, but there are no mandatory recounts in the state of Mississippi. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers because I think it's important to realize that, um, <laughs> not the white chair. <laughs> if y'all not getting out there and voting, they bring it out the chairs. So as of July 1st, there was 1.9 million active voters registered in Mississippi. The state does not register voters by party. Turnout in 2019 primary for governor was 15% of registers voted in the Democratic contest and 19% for Republicans. So what that means is, where are the Democrats at? Y'all need to come out and vote. The results were similar in the 2015 primary, 15% for Democrats, 14% for Republicans. That is such a small margin that came out to vote. You guys could literally get rid of um, 
Tate Reeves just in the primary alone. That means that um, 285,000 registered Democrats came out and voted. And let's see how many. How many um, Republicans came out and voted. And that's that's ridiculous because if you guys really want to make a change. You can actually get rid of Tate Reeves before he even gets to the door. Like if you vote for um, one of the other Republican nominees, you can get him out of there. 361,000 Republicans. Um, so if the Democrats can e increase that increase by, let's see, all you need is a 5% increase. That's only 95,000 voters. If if we can get 95,000 voters to be registered, like it's possible. And yes, it, Stacey Abrams needs to come on over because it's doable. Um, but it you can really get rid of somebody in the primaries. It says relatively few Mississippi voters cast ballots before election day. The state does not allow in-person early voting and allows absentee by mail voting only for those who provide a valid excuse. In 2018, 2020, and 2022 state primaries, only about 4% voted by absentee ballot. So there may be some like things that make it hard for people to vote. And one of those most certainly could be the fact that you're not allowed to do in-person early voting, um, that they're really restrictive with absentee by mail voting. It said the state reported a total of 20,468 absentee ballots received as of July 31st out of almost 27,000 total absentee ballots requested by voters. Absentee ballots must be postmarked by election day and must be received by August 15th. Um, it said in 2019, the general election, the AP first voter results at 8, 12 p.m. The election night tabulation ended shortly after 1.30 a.m. Eastern time with 95% of the voters votes counted. So, I mean, listen, if you guys want uh, to get rid of, you guys want to get rid of um, Tate Reeves, y'all going to have to get out there and vote at the primary. We could have got rid of him at the primary election. If you want, if you really wanted to get rid of him. Y'all got to hit these Mississippian Republicans over the head and let them know Tate Reeves doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about Jackson having water. He doesn't care about um, the rural areas having hospitals. He just does not care. It doesn't matter. The only thing that he cares about is his alma mater and um, rich people. Other than that, he does not care. Um And so, with that, what's today? Monday? I'm going to do a Jackson State Live on Wednesday. But I just wanted to get on here and share with you a little bit of information. I'm not going to be long-winded tonight. Um, I did want to come on here, though, and let you know that um, tomorrow is a very important day for the state of Mississippi. Um, and I might come on live tomorrow um, just to go over the results as they come in so we can talk about them. So once again, um, make sure you get out and vote and Make sure you call all your friends, family members, and tell them to get out 
and vote. So if they don't, they're going to be unhappy with who is um, on the ballot for November. And y'all have a good night.